You know, friends, kissing is not simple. It's an art. I mean, just take a look where we put kisses. You could kiss a person on his hand, which usually shows uh, respect. Many cultures, an older person you kiss on the hand. It could also show subservience. You know, you kiss the hand of a religious leader or so. We also kiss on the cheek. That's uh, usually affection, um, acknowledgement. And then, there's, and then there is uh, the more private kiss, an erotic kiss uh, on the lips. And each, each, each kiss actually has a different meaning, not only because of where you're putting it, but how, how you're extending it. But I want to teach you about a new kiss, one you never heard of. It's called the Hasidic kiss, or in Yiddish, a Hasidic kush. Well, what does that mean, a Hasidic kiss? Before I tell a short story, a quick introduction. There's a lot of discussion about parenting, and almost all of us have a, uh, a strong feeling when you hear about, God forbid, abuse, abuse of children. But we have to define, what, what does abusing of children mean? It could mean mental, emotional, or physical pain. It could also mean indifference. And this we know factually. And actually, who knows, maybe some of you that are listening might actually relate to this from family. And that is when you feel that you're not counted, that you're not taken into account. So whether or not they, your parent um, makes fun of your schooling, or whether they're indifferent, ignored, it's very hurtful very painful. And it's often surprising to parents who provide um, housing, education, even, even entertainment, and yet their, their children feel neglected because there's no quality time or no time period spent. There's a different form of abuse, and that is when you neglect the most important part of the child. So a uh, father might say, I'm a good father, I, I bring home the paycheck. And the mother might say, I'm a good mother, I, uh, I prepare supper. And what the child says is, but when I'm crying, no one notices. I need someone to talk to. I need someone to feel my pain. I need someone to console me. I need someone to strengthen me. Okay. Let's, no, I don't want to continue on that. You, you could continue yourself. What would you say to a kid who's living in America where the parents do not give him an education? They don't allow this child to go to school, and they don't do homeschooling. But they provide plenty of, uh, uh, of X, Xbox games and plenty of... Uh, computer time, TV time, movie time, isn't that a form of neglect? Actually, a form of abuse? There has been so many uh, advertising. A mind is a terrible thing to waste. Holding back a person from thinking, from studying, from being educated. Okay. So now let me get to the point. What happens if you provide housing and education, but you don't give a, a moral education? Or to put it a little bit differently, you give the child the wherewithal of life, but you don't give him the reason of why he should live. What's the purpose of life? What's the meaning of life? What's significant about his life? That is something which sometimes we forget. It's as important to teach a kid to brush his teeth or to do homework. Don't you think it's important to make a child feel empowered that his life is meaningful and important? And that's where, we're, where the Hasidic kiss comes in. A story. 
the fifth Lubavitcher Rebbe, Rabbi Sholem Dov Bereshnirsen, had an only son whose name was Yosef Yitzchak, but of course he was the sixth Rebbe of Chabad, so Rebbe Yosef Yitzchak. The Rebbe lived in a very small apartment, and the bedroom where his son was sleeping was actually the kitchen. And uh, the Rebbe was studying Torah with a Chassid companion, the Paltova Rov. They were studying something very deep, something very profound, obviously something very godly. And early in the morning, maybe two, three o'clock in the morning, the Paltova Rov glances at the boy sleeping, a nine-year-old boy. And not only was there a, a purity and a peacefulness to this child's face, Rabbi Yosef Yitzchak, it, it almost radiated light. This was like a cherubic, like an angelic face. And he turns to the father and he says, such a face radiating such, such, such beauty and holiness can only come because his thoughts and his dreams are pure. The Rebbe looked at his son, his only son, and for a moment had a really strong desire to kiss him. Such a wonderful, holy child. Such a pure, innocent child. And then he held himself back. And he thought to himself, you know, when a person loved God in the days of the temple, he could bring an animal as an offering. He could bring flour and oil as an offering. He could also donate money as an offering. In other words, there are many ways in which a person could show his love to, to God. He decided that he would show his love to his son, which in turn meant he was also going to show his love to God for giving him such a son by writing a mimer, by writing a Hasidic thought. And that very late at night, early in the morning, he, he wrote a profound, beautiful teaching which describes the relationship between God and his people. The son was sleeping, did not know about it. When he was 12 years old, his father gave him that writing and said, my son, I am giving you a Hasidic kiss. And when you get older, I'll tell the story behind it. When he was 15, the Rebbe then told him the whole background to this mimer. It has many layers of meaning. I will only share one external layer, which I, which I, which talks to me. A kiss brings closeness. It shows affection. It brings two people into one. What could be stronger than a rebbe and a son following in the same path? understanding their responsibilities and fulfilling it, and doing it gladly, doing it in unison, doing it together. Could there be any greater form of affection, father and son walking the same path? That's a Hasidic kiss. And that's what we have to do to our children and to, by extension, our family. Many times we meet a family member, we give a hug. Sometimes we give a peck on the cheek. On the cheek. That's affection. That's a kiss. But a Hasidic kush, a Hasidic kiss, that's something that's very profound. It doesn't touch only the body. It touches the soul. Many of us are kissed by our parents. They've taught us, and by our grandparents. They taught us right from wrong. They lived ethical, decent, Jewish lives. And there's, to goodness there's no limit. So let's be more loving to our children and let's become more Hasidic. Shalom. Shalom.